to talk about uh, user interfaces in Guile, how to build them, and what you can use them for. So that's what I'm going to do. Can everybody hear me? We can't see all the slides. Um, well, does anyone know how to change it so we can? Just change the resolution to 1024. How do you do that in Geeks? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> what have you done? It's Gabriel Q, right? Okay, terminal. We don't have an X ray. Uh, okay, I don't know. That's, that's, these are just normal problems that you get when you're uh, <laughs> doing presentations. What works on your machine never works on an overhead projector. Yeah. I don't know. You don't have. A yeah. I I I, uh, I, su I suggest we go with it actually. Yeah. yeah. Um. They can have eleven. F eleven. What does F eleven do? The window is full screen. Well, we can have half the screen like that. Good enough. Is that better? Yeah. But that's. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll run with it. So, what is a user interface? A user interface is the means by which the user and the computer interact. Uh, typical examples are a shell, which uh, all GNU slash Linux uh, systems have, at least all that I'm aware of. The REPL, which is common for uh, Guile users. And of course, graphical user interfaces. Uh, what does a user expect from their interface? Normally, they want a means to give commands to the system. The, the, you've got, they've got to be able to tell the computer how to do something and when to do it. Um, they want a means to determine the current state of the system. For example, in a, in a shell, you type ls to see what files there are in the current directory. And a means to get, um, normally they want a means to get hints about uh, what, what commands might be appropriate for the current status. So for example, in a shell you have, um, uh, modern shells anyway, you've got tab completion, so you can hit the tab key and it will um, give you a list of uh, possible ways to complete that command. When you're talking about graphical user interfaces, the, the users expect something somewhat more. A graphical user interface user, he, he normally wants instantaneous, well, not when I say instantaneous, what I mean is um, uh, automatic updates without any perceptible delay. Um, and that should happen without the user actually having to do anything. Whereas a shell user is quite happy to have to um, type ls again to see what uh, files may have in the last five seconds appeared or deleted. Uh, GUI users don't like that. They want to see things when happen when, when something changes, they want to see it automatically appear on their screen. They want automatic notifications of successes. Um, in the shell, we don't normally like that. If something works after giving in a shell command, we expect it to silently return zero and get on with the next thing. We don't like it saying stupid things. GUI users, however, prefer normally, the ones I've seen, they prefer to see some kind of confirmation that that command worked. They want explicit and verbose notifications of failures. So if something doesn't work, they want a very verbose pop-up or something to, sell, to say that didn't work. <coughs> Context-sensitive prompts. So they like to see that something 
um, well, if a command is not appropriate to be entered at that time, then that command sh should not be there. The button should be grayed out or, or not even there at all. So that's something that you have to think about if you're writing a, a graphical interface is, uh, it, it, is to only present what is appropriate for the current state. And confidence in indicators. Um, if there is a command that is going to take a long time, then they want some kind of uh, um, indication that uh, the machine is doing something and hasn't just sort of hung. So the exercise which I was charged with undertaking was to write a graphical installer for Geeks SD. We want an alternative to the shell or the REPL because currently in Geeks SD one um, the, the, uh, the, the described way in the manual um, involves a number of shell commands to uh, partition your disk um, set up file systems etc 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 and although many people are quite happy doing that um, we think it would uh, um, lower the barriers to entry if uh, people who find those ways not so easy had a alternative means of doing it so that's what we want we want to give geeks sd a graphical installer so that you can install it from a bare machine but we don't want to force that on people we want to um, still give the uh, traditional old timers a, a, a way of installing manually and I believe we should actually allow for a, a compromise so that if, if um, people like doing part of the job themselves they can do but for the other bits which are, are either too hard or, or, or too much of a hassle um, they can give that off to the program to do for them. So the acceptance criteria were that the installer should be written in Guile because everything else in Geeks is in Guile and uh, Ludo wasn't going to make an exception for me. Um, it should have a, a allow a complete installation from nothing, a, an empty a machine with an empty disk um, without having to use a shell or a REPL. But as I said to allow experienced guys to use it if they want to. Right, it should be available in, in their own language in Keymap. There's just nothing more annoying um, um, when you're installing uh, um, machines and the uh, key layout that you've got in front of you isn't what, well, it doesn't conform to what the, the key map that the machine is using. So if you're using a French keyboard, you've gotten, you hit the A key and a Q pops up, that annoys the French people. And the same with the Germans with the Q and the Z being swapped over. So we want to be able to provide a way to get their own language and their own key map. It should work on a, an 80 by 25 terminal because uh, some machines don't have anything bigger, especially some of these little boxes that you see these days. And we want it to be uh, um, intuitive as possible so that you don't really need uh, anyone to tell you how to use it. It should be uh, more or less straightforward. So how does it work when you're setting up, up geeks? Um, well, the, the, the task you've got to do, you've got to partition the disk. You must have at least one partition. You've got to say what, where those partitions or where the file systems on those partitions should be mounted. You've got to tell them what kind of file system that you want, what parameters. Time zone is something that needs to be chosen for the system. The locale, the default locale, obviously users each user can set their own one, but the system locale needs to be chosen. Packages, there might be some standard packages. Well, there will be some standard packages um, that should be 
available for the entire system. As uh, Ricardo said, usually they're installed, most packages are installed in the user profile so they don't affect all users. Um, services, which um, I think somebody else is talking about services later on, so I won't go into too much detail about those, but they need to be chosen. Um, you've got to generate the config. Um, normally you need a network, because um, Geeks is installed over the network. And then you've got to set the whole thing in motion. So those are the uh, um, <coughs> things you've got to do. A couple of uh, constraints for this exercise. We cannot rely on any particular video drivers being available. Um, because all, all, all systems these days have different videos, video systems. So we cannot um, say this installer is only going to work if you've got an SGI or a ATI or God knows what. We've got to use the, the lowest common denominator so that it'll be there when you've got a pretty well a bare kernel. And of course we want to keep the, uh, the uh, uh, installation image as small as possible because it has to fit on a USB device. Although they're quite large these days, they're not infinite. So how does it look so far? That's really a shame that we can't get the entire Yeah, why is it that uh, these uh, overhead projector systems never work? No, I don't know. How about that? Yeah, that's uh, more or less what it looks like. So um, there's a menu on the main screen. I, I can demonstrate this to, to people who are interested afterwards, but uh, actually demonstrating it in real life now won't be, uh, I don't think there'll be the time for that. Um, there's a menu which you can do the steps individually. Um, if a user though doesn't want to do the steps individually, they can choose the bottom one and it'll do everything and all its uh, dependencies all at once. So that, that's the easy way for inexperienced people. But as I said, we've got these uh, commands here. Um, that's keyboard for F10, so change the keyboard map. F9 to change the language. So if you want it in uh, German or French or whatever, you can, or at least you will be when the translators have done their job. Um, and if you want a shell, you can hit F1 and you will get out to a shell and when you hit exit, when you type exit in that shell, you'll come back to where you left off. And those, um, those three uh, hotkeys will be available throughout the whole process, so you can, you can do that at any time. Um, and because we can't use a video driver, um, we decided to use Curses. You're probably familiar with Curses. It's, uh, it's a GNU package and it provides an abstraction around the terminal capabilities. Each terminal in the world has a different way of uh, um, being controlled and Curses abstracts that out. So uh, there is a common way to um, for example, draw a box on the screen or put a or move the cursor to position x y on the screen, etc etc. It also has a couple of uh, higher level libraries which I might talk about a li little bit better, but the main um, cursus library is a C API. However, um, as I said earlier, um, this has got to be written in Gale. So fortunately, there is a library called or a package called Gale and Curses. I think that is the is Mike Graham here. Oh, there he is, right at the back. He's the maintainer of uh, Gale and Curses, and that is what we've used. 
And um, just very briefly going into how um, those menus work in, 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 in curses, or guile in curses, um, it has the uh, means to display a menu like this. The user can uh, move up and down and select items in the menu. If you were writing it in C, that would be the uh, interface. You've got, uh, well, you have to uh, uh, create a, an array of items, populate that array with a name and description, and create the menu, do whatever you want with the menu, and when you're finished, um, the, it's your responsibility to free that menu and the uh, lines that you can't see down here because of this system, you've then got to free the, uh, the items if you don't want it to uh, leak memory. Um, how do you do that in guile in curses? Um, similar way or how would you do it? Similar way, create your, an, a list of names, list of descriptions, then, in this case I've used a map and a lambda expression to create a list of uh, um, items, each of which is a, a pair, and then create your, uh, your menu here. So in theory, you can uh, you can you can do that with uh, guile in curses, and there is a similar thing for forms if you want to make, create a form entry system, which I have done. My experience with them wasn't that successful, unfortunately. Um, I found that first of all the 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 way in which the forms and menus in incurses are structured does not really lend themselves to scheme. I found that they were somewhat inflexible. Um, the early versions were actually tending to crash every now and then, especially when the garbage collector ran at uh, uh, inappropriate moments. And I, I sent Mike there a few patches, and it's got a lot better in recent uh, um, releases. Um, but I'm still not confident that all the bugs have been ironed out. Um, there are, I have noticed occasions where it works most of the time but then when the garbage collector runs when you don't expect it then suddenly it crashes. And even if, if those, that system, that those problems have been fixed, um, as I say I don't really think that the uh, the interface lends itself to, 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 to scheme programming. Oh, and I'm not absolutely convinced that all the memory leaks have been heard out. I'm, uh, we, perhaps we can talk afterwards, Mike, but uh, yeah, um, I don't mean to uh, um, pour cold water on your efforts, but uh, <laughs> um, anyway, f either rightly or wrongly, um, I decided not to use the forms and uh, menus libraries of Guile and Curses. I wrote my own, which did an equivalent thing. Um, small set of modules, which did more or less the same, written entirely in Scheme, but using the base Curses. So I'm, I'm still using Guile and Curses, I'm just not using their forms and menus. Um, implementation. Okay, thank you. Um, well, that's an example of how it, how it does it. Um, as we're running out of time, I'll, uh, I'll uh, skip that. But uh, I think that way is a lot easier than the previous way that I showed you. Human factors we have to consider in um, user interfaces. This was an early screenshot of something I sent out for testing. Um, they are not... This, this, this form actually got a lot of negative feedback from the people I asked to test and I think the reason is obvious. There are too many controls on this screen. 
Some of them are not even appropriate. Um, people didn't know what these buttons were going to do, which is understandable. <laughs> it doesn't say... In fact, when you, when you, uh, well, check actually runs FSCK, write will run MKFS to create the file system and... No, recreate does that. <laughs> right would run... Yeah, exactly. If you don't know what it's going to do, then it's probably a poor design. Um, so that's, that's uh, one lesson that we learned. Don't write your user interfaces too complicated. Uh, and that's been, uh, in the new version, that's been changed quite considerably. Tech info. Um, yeah, we, 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 we need to... Uh, uh, have a system to turn tech info into something that curses can display. Um, those of you who are familiar with uh, Guile know that there is this uh, existing function called techie fragment to stechie, um, which converts things like, uh, again, we can't see this whole thing, the days of our lives with a bold in tech info into something more scheme friendly which is a start of a paragraph, the days of, and in bold is our, and we're no longer bold here. But that's existing in, in tech info, uh, in uh, uh, Guile. I had to write a new procedure to actually turn this thing into something that curses will, will play nicely with, and I can show you that later if you're interested. Um, there's, so the status so far, what's been done? Well, we've got a reasonably complete Curses-based <laughs> installer. Um, it, it has been sent out for first testing. Users have reported that it, it does work. They have been able to do a complete installation of Geeks SD without having to resort to a shell. And I believe those people have used different hardware and different uh, network systems, etc., etc. So it basically all works. Problems? Well, as I said earlier, the, uh, the problems that I find is that um, we are lacking on Guile bindings. Another problem I found is that we, there is no current way that I've found to get... Um, the kernel to tell us when something has changed. I have to poll it, and that has that is not a nice way of doing things. Um, this is a, a, a brief procedure I wrote to get around the first problem, the, the lack of uh, bindings. What I basically have to do is uh, screen scrape commands. So I run a run a command in a pipe, and um, um, collect the output that comes onto standard out, and then post process it. Also not nice, but it does work. Here's how I do my polling for changes. <coughs> I just use SIG, SIG alarm to poll every second. Again, not nice, but it works. But what can one do without the, uh, the infrastructure? <laughs> what we don't have yet in the system is mouse support. That, that I'm trying to work out. But I'm actually finding that, unfortunately, it, uh, where I've got a, whereas it can work on the um, on an X term, you don't have an X term when you boot up your machine. You've got a a frame buffer terminal, and I'm not sure if that can work with that. LVM, full disk encryption, that's not supported as yet, and neither is adding users. A lot of people said they want an option to add users. I normally consider that a post. Um, installation task, but some people like to do it at the time of installation, apparently. Here's some ideas that some people came up with, and I'm still trying to work out whether they're good ideas or not. Um, tool tips so that if you hover the mouse over a, a button um, that you might get some text saying what it's going to do, or you, or you select, select that button without actually activating it. Should, uh, switch to question time. Questions? New speaker should set up. Okay, so perhaps the new system can come. So, yeah. Okay, questions? Yes? Um, if you had so much uh, trouble with um, uh, 
writing uh, Gile and Curtis findings on rewrite uh, Have you also considered writing the end curses things in C and then uh, expose the, the high level interface functions to Gile? Well, that's basically what Gile and Curses does or tries to do. And um, you're, uh, I didn't have that much trouble writing the, the uh, um, menus in Guile when I wrote my own libraries to do that. I had a lot more trouble using the, uh, the Guile and Curses interface. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, pull that up.